What up, squad? Welcome back to the channel. No, I'm not smoking weed. I am smudging the spot. So today we're going to be discussing the top 10 beginner weight loss mistakes that I've seen over the last eight years. And I'm guilty of a lot of these mistakes as well. So don't feel like I'm trying to come at you. I just want you to learn from the mistakes that I've made and tons of my clients have made. Make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up. I'm trying to get this video to 4,000 likes. If I get this video to 4,000 likes, if you comment, I'm going to randomly pick people and I'm going to be giving away some t-shirts, but only if this video gets to 4,000 likes. So let's jump right into it. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making is that they focus too much on the scale. The scale is only one of many ways to track your progress. And in my opinion, the scale is the worst way to track your progress because there's so many factors and there's so many variables that go into that number. And we put our hearts, our souls, our entire motivation, right? Everything that we have in our weight loss journey for most of us goes into that number. And if that number isn't what we want it to be, a lot of us, we lose motivation. It controls us emotionally. So don't just focus on the scale. Focus on measurements. Focus on the way that your clothes are fitting. Focus on how good you're feeling, how well you're sleeping, how's your energy levels, how's your mood. These are the metrics that I think is more dependable to track your progress. The second mistake that I see people making is that they follow a meal plan. Now, meal plans are really great tools. But using a meal plan and eating exactly what's on a meal plan verbatim is the equivalent of someone just giving you fish versus you learning how to fish. With a meal plan, you're depending on the direction of this plan. You're not educating yourself on nutrition. You're not really learning how your body responds to calories and, and how to experiment with different foods. And you don't really learn how to fish you're depending on that meal plan. There's so much more value in actually studying nutrition and experimenting and creating your own meal plan. Before we move on to the next mistake, I want you guys to know that I put together a powerful resource. It's my fat loss guide. It is for free. The link is in the description below. Make sure you check your spam folder and confirm your email subscription. That's the only way you're going to receive the email of the actual fat loss guide. And also guys, I have some exclusive offers coming up. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description to join my email crew. Do yourself a favor and stay in the loop. All right. So the next mistake that I see people make all the time is that they don't track their calories. Now there's different people who make different content on the internet. And I've heard people say, yes, you don't need to track calories in order to lose weight. And that's true. But if you really want to transform your body, if you want to go from beer belly to six pack, right? Or if you want to lose a significant amount of weight, you have to know exactly what you're eating. Because at the end of the day, weight loss is about creating a calorie deficit. And you cannot create a calorie deficit if you don't know how many calories you're eating. Let me give you a quick example. I was on a quote unquote plateau for 18 months, 18 months. I was exercising, I was eating healthy. And for the life of me, I could not lose another pound. Ultimately, this plateau was because I was eating way more calories than I thought I was. I wasn't measuring the peanut butter that I was putting in my protein shakes. I wasn't accurately measuring the amount of dressing that I was putting in my salads. So I thought I was in a caloric deficit when really I was eating four, 500 calories more than I thought. So this Plateau wasn't a plateau. It was, I just was eating too many calories. The next mistake that I see people making all the time is that they're under eating calories. Yes, you have to eat in a caloric deficit, but you don't want that deficit to be too huge because in the long run, this sets you back. We think that the formula for weight loss is eat less and exercise more. And for short term weight loss, that works. But for long term sustainable weight loss, that is a formula for disaster. Not getting enough protein and fiber. I see this happen too often. The main reasons why you wanna make sure you're getting enough protein and fiber for one, of course, protein helps you maintain muscle mass. But more importantly, protein and fiber helps keep you satiated, meaning you're not gonna be hungry. It keeps you feeling full. And listen, this is one of the secrets of weight loss that I never hear people talking about. The, the, the key to this, is to never be hungry. You don't have to be hungry in order to lose weight. So protein and fiber keeps you satiated. And when you're not hungry, you're not going to end up in the drive-through somewhere. The next mistake that I see people making is that they're not 
focusing on whole foods. If 80% of your diet is whole foods, meaning non-processed foods with one ingredient, foods that come from the ground, from an animal, from a tree. If you focus on eating these type of foods, for one, you get way more volume for your calorie, meaning you can eat a lot of whole foods without it costing you a bunch of calories, except if we're talking about fats, but that's a whole nother conversation. Focus on eating non-processed foods. You don't want to be getting most of your foods from a can, from a box or from a bag. You want it to be from a whole food source, like I mentioned. The next mistake that I see people making all the time is that they eat inconveniently. Here's the thing about weight loss. You want it to fit into your lifestyle as best as possible. You don't want to disrupt your lifestyle too much because that's not sustainable. So when you hear people saying you have to eat five to seven meals a day, listen, that's BS. You don't have to do that, especially if it's inconvenient. If you have a job where you can't eat at your desk every two hours, then it doesn't make sense. If you don't love breakfast, you don't have to eat breakfast. You can eat one time a day. You can eat two times a day. You can eat seven times a day. At the end of the day, it's about how many calories you're consuming in that day. Period. Next big mistake, drinking calories. Listen, there's so many zero calorie options. If you just stop drinking calories, you can save a ton of calories just by doing that alone. Listen, I don't care if you drink diet soda. And I know everyone has different opinions about that. But at the end of the day, if you're focusing on reducing your calorie intake, is it the healthiest thing in the world? No, probably not. But if you're focusing on your calorie intake and you still, we all, we're still going to have our vices. Drink a diet soda. Just drink a diet soda. Next mistake, only doing cardio. There's so many people who try to lose weight and they think, all right, well, let me just do two hours of cardio a day. No, focus mainly on weights. There's a lot of metabolic advantages to focusing on weights. Cardio is essentially going to make you smaller, but you're essentially going to have the same exact shape. So if you're round at the bottom or whatever your shape is, you're just going to be a smaller version of that. If you want to create a nice figure, if you want to round your shoulders, you want to shrink your waist, then focus on resistance training. The next mistake, and I see this all the time, and we're all guilty of it, is trying to rush the process. In the beginning of my weight loss journey, if I would have known that anything I did to try to speed up the process would ultimately set me back further in the long run, oh my God, it, it would have been a game changer if I would have known that. It's the truth. You cannot rush weight loss. If you rush it, yes, you're going to see some immediate short-term results, but in the long run, like I mentioned, it's going to set you back. Take your time develop better habits, develop a better relationship with food. Listen, patience is a virtue. And this is especially true with weight loss. And the last mistake, and this one kind of piggybacks off of what I just mentioned, is doing too much too soon. I've been guilty of it in the past. I start on these weight loss journeys. I want to work out six days a week. I want to totally change what I eat. I want to eat brown rice and chicken breast and broccoli every single day. I'm not going to have any cheat meals. Listen, if you try to attack this lifestyle this way, it's not going to be sustainable. It's going to shock your system. You have to court this lifestyle. You have to build a good relationship with exercise. You have to slowly change your habits. You have to respect this process. Listen, most of us, we have 50, 60, 70 years left to live. What is the rush? Take your time. Allow your habits to change your body. Don't try to force yourself. Just do it slowly. I promise you, this is the approach that wins this race. Anyway, squad, 4,000 likes. Let's get this to 4,000 likes. Make sure you share this video if it helped you at all. And as always, I'm just trying to share the wellness with y'all. So get well and get money. Mm -hmm.